Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a speed build of Lil Simsy's shell challenge. She had put this out probably like two weeks ago. I thought that this was going to be a lot easier. Honestly, it is small, so it looks like it's going to be fairly simple, but doing the roofing on this was so hard, and I'm used to her builds being so large. Like, a lot of her shell challenges, it's two stories, they're giant, sometimes she has random walls that you can't touch or anything, so this one was still pretty difficult. I think the main part was figuring out the roofing as you will end up seeing I have a lot it, there's only it's almost like a full wraparound porch around the house because I was just trying to have straight surfaces <laughs> so I could actually do the roof I cut out so much of me trying to figure out how to roof this it was about 45 minutes of me trying to figure it out but in the end I got there my favorite part of this build I will have to say is the backyard you'll see there's so much greenery and plants I end up putting a pool back there but just figuring out the roof layout was so difficult and figuring out the floor plan on the inside was also pretty hard because it is so small i'm just used to having larger rooms <laughs> I was thinking of going with a farmhouse theme with this, but I was just having so much difficulty figuring out, honestly, the foundation. I feel like we don't have a whole lot of swatches for the foundations, and it's really hard when you want to have stairs and you like the look of it, but we don't have really good foundation swatches, so I was having a rough time figuring out what I really wanted to do. Here is when I decided I was just going to go full 
get together for this build. I really liked how the fencing had some vines on it so I started doing the backyard with plants and some vines up the walls. For me to be able to get extra items and move things to where exactly I want them to be, you just hit Control shift c and that will pop up a cheat menu. And if you type in bb.moveobjects, you can move things freely to how you want them. And then bb.showHiddenObjects and bb.showLiveEditObjects is how later on I will get into debug. And I will create a, my own little side driveway for this. And debug just has a lot of nice, you can, they have plants, they have all kinds of things that are items that your sims will use that you don't have access to. So like when they're trying to clean the toilet or when they're making drinks all of those glasses that we technically can't get in buy mode you can get in debug i really wanted the outside of this house to be full of a bunch of different flowers i wanted it to be really like really fill up the space I didn't want any empty space so I might have went a little overboard with it but I ended up really liking it I did cut out a bit so you're not gonna have to deal with like hour of me landscaping the entire backyard but in the end you will see how it all turns out I don't really have any real technique when I do landscaping. I kind of choose what flowers I want and place them where I think it looks nice. I love having little walkways from the front of the house to the back of the house. I think they're so cute. So this is when I am kind of marking the pathway to get from the front to the back of the house. And this is where the pool will be. And on the side of the pathway walking back here is also where the driveway will be. I put the two trash cans kind of to symbolize maybe having trash and then recycling and here I do end up going into debug and finding an actual recycling can. It isn't actually useful, like you can't do anything with it, but I just like the look of it. Adds a little extra detail. 
and this is where I found the car. I ended up finding a plunger, so I kind of stuck it there. Because once you do, you can only take an item out of debug once. So, like, you can't hit the eyedropper and duplicate it because technically it's not available to you. This might seem stupid, but I'm gonna be honest, when I first started playing The Sims, I didn't realize that you could tile your pools. Had no idea. I added these fishes because I thought it would be really pretty when you're swimming and you have a little waterfall in your pool. Seems a little bougie. This is when I started on the interior of the house. I did have trouble on the interior. I think because it was so small, so the ideas that I had, it looked weird because I was using larger furniture and it looked a little squish. But I think in the end, it honestly just made it look a little more cozy. And sometimes in The Sims, it's actually nicer to be in a smaller house because Sims just do what they want. Especially when they have a lot of surfaces to put things on, they'll eat food and instead of washing the plate, they'll just stick it on furniture. I had shelves that when my walls were down, you couldn't tell that they were there. I went to edit my house after playing in it in like for sim weeks and there was just smelly plates all on the shelves because instead of washing it or sticking it on the counter they place it up on the shelves on the wall
And because the bedroom is so small, I had such a horrible time trying to figure out how I wanted it situated because I wanted to have a bed and I wanted to have two end tables on the side, but the room is just too small because of how I laid it out. I'm sure there was a better way to lay it out. I this is what I came up with because it took me so long to figure this out in the first place because I wanted to have an office. I'm sure if I didn't want that, I could have had a much larger room and there wouldn't have been an issue. But it took me like five minutes figuring out what I wanted to do with end tables because I wanted a small one, but I also wanted it to look more antique and not so modern because I totally could have used the small end table that comes with Dream Home Decorator, but it wasn't really the vibe that I was going with. So I just settled on the season's end tables. It wasn't exactly what I wanted, but it looked a lot better than what I could have chosen in my eyes with how I went with the style of the room. And to move the items up and down, because I do have move objects on with the cheats, if you just hit shift 9, it will bring the items up. And if you hit shift 0, it will bring them down. They can't go lower than what their like base item is to be regularly placed on the ground. So you can't like have them half underground. And putting the robe on the back of the door, it is still functional for them to come inside. It doesn't really affect them at all. It's just if it bothers you when they open the door and it's just like chill in there, if that bothers you, you can just delete it. But it doesn't cause any interference with them walking in and out of the bathroom.
Am I the only person who does this where you're looking through decor items and you just see something you like so you just place it wherever so you remember to use it later on so you don't have to scroll back through to find it? Or am I just that lazy? I don't know why I added the chicken or the pig, but I just thought they were really cute items, so I just placed them in the living room. Because I just felt like it. This home can accommodate having a cat. Now that I think about it, I don't remember if I even placed a litter box, so that might be an issue. You might end up having to place a litter box. I completely forgot to do that. But... Other than that, this build is done. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye!